At the top of the day, you guys heard me talk about my inspiration, Opal My Girl, Gore, my sweet, sweet, sweet little crazy monster of a little girl. And um, this next panel is important to me because I'm always trying to learn what girls face in the world. And someone who has been an inspiration in our Girl Up campaign, Nigel Barker, is going to lead us through this conversation. And Nigel, as many of you know, is a world-renowned photographer, fashion editor, but he's also the dad of Jack, who is seven, and Jasmine, who's four. So he's a personal expert also on this subject. And I am so thrilled that with him today will be also a few of our girl champions. Julie Zellinger is a Bernard student and the author of The F-Bomb. I get to say that on stage, which is awesome. Saba Ismail is the co-founder of Aware Girls in Pakistan. And Inez Enrique is a Girl Up teen advisor. So please welcome our girl expert to the stage. Well, hello, everybody. I hope you're enjoying the conversation. A lot of talk about mums, um, you know, and obviously being a dad, feeling a little bit left out, uh, you know, but obviously at the same time, I have two children, and I have a little girl called Jasmine um, that Elizabeth just mentioned, and, you know, I have certainly wanted to grow up uh, in this world, uh, hopefully to be someone a bit like one of you ladies. Uh, and, and if you really think about what's happening with girls these days, there is a movement. There is a, a real girl movement that is happening, not just in the United States, but around the world. And as Elizabeth mentioned, I've been working with Girl Up, which is a, a campaign now uh, for the United Nations Foundation. But when I started you know, three years ago, it was really in its infancy. From then to now, we now have 300,000 followers, friends, and girls who are girling up, just like I'm manning up, for the cause, which is fantastic. And we're also now in 29 countries. Now, Girl Up initially started off as a, an organization, or as a, more, more, more to the point, as a campaign to mobilize American girls to raise money and funds for girls around the world. But now, of course, being in different countries, that message is changing. Because obviously, we need girls all around the world to unite and raise money and raise awareness. Um, now, each one of you advocates for girls in different ways. I'd love to know about, um, let's start with you, shall we, Saba. Tell me about one person um, uh, that has influenced you and, and you know, encouraged you to advocate in the first place. Well, today I would like to tell you a true story of a, a young girl from a rural area of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province of Pakistan, having close borders with Afghanistan and the federally administered tribal areas. She, this girl was only seven years old when she faced difficult situations in her life. She faced sexual harassment, verbal harassment, physical harassment, mostly on streets and from, mostly from strange men. She was just seven and she was so much afraid of this difficult situation in her life. She, she was so afraid and she thought there is something wrong with her because every time her body was targeted by the perpetrators, she was humiliated and her dignity was attacked. So in that difficult situation, what, she became quiet, she stopped expressing herself and she lost her confidence. But inside her there was a continuous war because she never wanted to be a girl to be silent and be obedient in that conservative, male-dominated, patriarchal, and religiously extremist society. So she decided to take a step forward, and she decided to challenge the traditional norms and values, and she became an advocate for women's rights. In her 18-year 18, 18 struggle, she is now 25, and actually she's now, right, right now she's speaking to you. So that is actually my story. <laughs> wow. Uh, just amazing and extraordinary and uh, you know truly my heart goes out to you and you know I think it's extraordinary what you're doing and in, in a part of the world too where many of us have really no understanding of what day-to-day -day life must be like. Um, I'm going to quickly move on to Julie because I want to hear about your story as well. Who, what person, what one person do you think really influenced you 
to start I've, the F-bomb. Yes. <laughs> I've been influenced by a lot of people, and a lot of women especially have really supported and helped me along my journey. But I think appropriately for today, I really would single out my mother, who is an incredible woman. And she really raised me to really believe in my own voice. And I remember even just from a young age, she would always ask my opinion, not just about what happened in school, but about real issues. And that's really at the heart of what I do with the F-bomb. The F-bomb is a blog for young feminists, and it's based on submissions. So it's open to any young woman who wants to write about the issues that they care about, whether it's reproductive health or education or just things that happen in their daily lives. I really want to show young women that their voices matter, and that was something that definitely my mom showed me when I was growing up. Brilliant. And Inez, how about yourself? You, are, you work at Girl Up. Yes. So <laughs> what, what ins who inspired you to advocate for Girl Up? Um, I think, not to say the same, but definitely my mother. Um, she, well, both of my parents, my mom's a journalist and my dad's a historian. So we kind of grew up with a really interesting dialogue at home. And we were, they would always treat me as an adult. They wouldn't baby me, they wouldn't belittle me. So I think that they always taught me that I actually could do something substantial and that I didn't have to become president to try to save or help a girl abroad. Um, that I could do something, even if you know, it didn't matter how small it was, that I could make some sort of change. And that was something that they instilled in me from a very young age. Brilliant. So I think as you're on right now, Inez, <laughs> I want to hear your 30 second elevator pitch. You've got me. Tell me about Girl Up and educate everyone here a little bit more about Girl Up. I've already given you a head start, so go. You've got 30 seconds. OK. Um, well. If Nigel Barker asked me, I'd probably take like 10 of them That's to five process seconds. the fact five seconds that it was Nigel now, Barker, yeah. if I'm being totally time honest. Time is money, money is time. You ain't got the time, I ain't got your... So, um, Girl Up is a truly innovative campaign of the United Nations Foundation that hopes to ensure that its ultimate goal is that girls in the developing world are educated, safe, healthy, empowered, and accounted for. And I think the most innovative part of this campaign is that it also works with American girls and girls in other countries. Um, girls here can start clubs in their schools, they can host fundraisers, they can build awareness within their own communities. And I think that's what makes this campaign so unique, that as much as, a, as we're helping girls abroad, we're also working with girls here in the United States, and they benefit just as much. Beautifully said, and I think I'm, I'm certainly convinced again. <laughs> Now, Julie, you've got 30 <laughs> seconds to drop the F-bomb in the elevator <laughs> with go. me. Go. OK, so the goal of the F-bomb is, and always has been, to create a space for young women to develop, own, and trust their own voices in a society that often silences us, um, objectifies us, and also often alienates us from each other and really pits us against each other in some situations. So my goal with the F-bomb is to create a space where young women can express their opinions and be heard but probably more importantly, where they can support each other in that same pursuit. Because I think together we have a much better chance at combating such a destructive culture than we ever could apart. Brilliant, well said, well done. Saba. Well, thank you. Uh, Aware Girls is a young women-led organization working for gender equality, women empowerment, and peace in the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province of Pakistan. We are working to strengthen the leadership capacities of young women, enabling them to act as agents of change and leaders in their communities. We envision a world where women's rights are equally respected as human rights, and women have control over their own lives and have equal access to sexual and reproductive health, education, employment, justice, legal resources, financial resources, and other social services. Through the platform of Aware Girls, we are also using social media to help and reach out to women. Uh, I have established, um, I'm actually running a hotline that gives women uh, and mothers information about contraceptives, safe medical abortion, um, postpartum hemorrhage, S STIs, sexually transmitted diseases, HIV AIDS, and other information according to World Health Organization guidelines. Uh, we are trying to save women's lives, and we are actually trying to empower them and trying to give them information so that they can take control of their own lives. That was definitely 60 seconds. We went up, <laughs> and you, guess what? Yes. It was so interesting, I went down with you in the exactly. elevator again. I thought it was worthwhile. <laughs> Brilliant. You are amazing, and all, all three of you are extraordinary. And I've got to say, I'd be delighted if my daughter could grow up to be anything like any one of you. Uh, you know, you've talked about your mothers, 
you know, who inspired you. Is there anybody else specifically that along the way, and there must have been, I mean, certainly my mother inspired me to do you know, so many things in my life. Who else, uh, you know, Inez, inspired you to sort of, you know, be, be the person you are? Um, I think, well, my family's Peruvian, so I travel there at least once a year since I can remember. And more than specific people, it was kind of the events and scenes that I saw there. Um, my cousins and I would drive around, like, handing out like snacks and like toys and stuff like that when I was much younger. And we were convinced that we were like changing a kid's life with like this bag of crackers or whatnot. And we would always be like moved by the stories and the people that we saw. And I remember this one specific time that I saw a young girl who I was like eight and she was probably eight and she looked a lot like me. And I just imagined, wow, that could be me. And I knew that what I was doing wasn't enough and that I wanted to do even more than that. Great. And Julie, I know that you don't like to offend with the F-bomb, and I can't help but keep saying the F-bomb, but there must have been a reason why you called it the F-bomb. You know, yeah. what, what, you know, what, what was your sort of reasoning behind that, that, using that terminology? I know you're slightly changing <laughs> the questions up here a little bit, but yeah. you know, there must have been someone that inspired you that, that really gave you the, the, the sort of incentive think, to do that. Yeah, a lot of it was growing up in Ohio where I did sort of feel alienated by embracing the term feminism. Um, I definitely grew up in a feminist household. I was surrounded by really empowered women, but it just wasn't a term that we used a lot. And when I really came across the movement, a lot of that happened through feminist blogging and discovering a lot of feminists out there and reading their work. It, I just really wanted to embrace it as fully as I possibly could. And I think the F-bomb kind of embodies that. And also it's just, it's fun. And it catches people's attention. <laughs> and Saba, did you have a mentor specifically in your life? Uh, yes, actually, now I think I can speak about my mother because my fam each and every member of my family supported it each and every stage throughout my life and my struggles. But of course, special among them was my mother. She believed in me and she taught to believe in myself. She taught me to gather my will, gather my inner energies and to challenge the stereotypes. She, uh, she, she, she always, you know, uh, she was very caring and very giving. I'm really, it's, it's really a joy of being her daughter. And I'm really grateful that the way I was raised, she, I think she's the f she was the first feminist I have ever met in my life. And uh, uh, being like being, uh, you know, take, being grown in s with such great love and support really made a big difference in my life. And I think it made me who I am today. And, and what specifically motivates you, do you think, to get, out, uh, get up every day and fight this fight and get the word out? I mean, it, it, you know, obviously I hear you're very inspirational, but it's not easy. And this is, can also be dangerous. Uh, you know, so what is it specifically that, you know, that makes you every morning say, you know what, I'm going to do this? I think struggle for dignity and struggle for opportunities give me the motivation. And the other thing is I think that women are not only the victims and beneficiaries, but they are the leaders and they are the drivers for social change. My dream, I have a dream, and that's actually motivate me every day. And my dream is uh, I dream for a Pakistan where there are no sexual violence where there is freedom and equality, where women are fully participating. And I dream for a Pakistan where there is no, no child marriages, no forced marriages, no killing in the name of honor, no token participation of women in the politics, and uh, where women's rights are equally respected as human rights. I th this is my faith, and I strongly believe that if we work together, if we struggle together, and if we stand up for, equal for gender equality, we will achieve all of this. Brilliant, well said. You know, there was a man who had a dream very similar to that, too. <laughs> and there are many more. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and the same question to you. I mean, what motivates you to, to sort of get out there and write for the F-bomb and encourage other people to do so? I know that you were trying to elicit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I so tried so. to recruit her. Um, <laughs> but I do think it is through interacting with the young women who do write for the F-bomb. Um, it's about seeing young women claim their voices, as I said, in a society that often encourages us not to. And, Sometimes even more than that, watching as young women read stories on the FM that make them feel less alone. Because I think that's really huge to feel like we're really in this together. And every time I see those interactions happen, I feel like I'm on the right path and I just feel lucky to have had the opportunity to amplify other young women's voices. And, and Inez, you obviously working here in the United States, you're seeing the, the numbers growing, mm -hmm. 300,000 followers and supporters of Girl Up. 
you know, that obviously must motivate you. Yeah. But what else is it specifically about this particular cause, about the girl movement that motivates you? Um, I think the fact that uh, everything I have or we living in the, the United States have is kind of through sheer luck, that we were lucky that we were born with families and in a place that values education. And that I just as easily could have been born in a rural town where I married off at the age of 10. And I think that there, the, once you realize that, that the, ch the topic changes from that could have been me to what else can I do to make this girl's world closer to my world. Brilliant. Well, I mean, I mean ladies and gentlemen, I think you, we, we've all obviously heard from these three extraordinary young women and there's no doubt that there is a, a very much a girl movement going on around the world, not just in the United States. And it takes us all to support them. And as much as you know, it's called girl up and girl awareness um, and the feminist bomb, let's get that right. Um, it's up to all of us to man up as much as girl up. And uh, you know, I, I encourage you all to, to watch movies um, like uh, Girl Rising. I'm not sure if you've seen the film Girl Rising yet, but it's an amazing film um, that Girl Up has partnered with. It's by 10 by 10, and it tells the story of nine extraordinary girls from all around the world, from nine different countries, and it's uh, written by nine different writers in those countries and uh, narrated by nine different actresses. And it is one of the most moving and motivating films I've ever seen. And I encourage you to see this film and to pass it along because it's the kind of show that really just grabs you by the heartstrings and makes you r realize how far we have to go, but at the same time, how far we've come. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please thank these three ladies. Thank you very much for your work. <laughs>